ओके तज्ञाना मुनीना स्वागत बहु हार्दिक सुधाम सुजना च स्वागत ओ महाभाग आगत स्वागत मैं डॉक्टर प्रज्ञा संतोष ठोसे सेक्रेटरी निमा उमस फोरम महाराष्ट्र राज्य आप सभी अतिथियों का डेलीगेट्स का सभी पदाधिकारी सदस्यों का निमा उमस फोरम महाराष्ट्र से स्वागत करती हूँ आई एस एम ग्रेजुएट के हितों का रक्षण और इंटीग्रेटेड प्रैक्टिस का उद्देश्य रखने वाली नीमा भारत में एकमात्र संगठन है इसी इंटीग्रेटेड अप्रोच की सोच लेकर हम आई नेशनल वेबिनार सीरीज ऑन इनफर्टिटी लेकर आए हैं वंध्यत्व इनफर्टिटी बांझपन एक सामाजिक कौटुंबिक सबसे बड़ी जटिल समस्या के सामने वैद्यक शास्त्र के सामने हमारे रोज के प्रैक्टिस में हर किसी को एज ए फैमिली फिजिशियन होने के नाते इन रुग्णों का सामना करना चाहिए हम अपने सभी सदस्यों का ज्ञानवर्धन करने करके इन्फर्टिटी को करने का आत्मविश्वास बढ़ाना चाहते हैं हेलो और इसी को सामने रखकर हम आठ अलग अलग विषय और उस उसमें तज्ञ वक्ताओं का चयन किया सभी वक्ता इस क्षेत्र विषय क्षेत्र में विषय में काफी नाम कमा चुके हैं और वो सभी आदरणीय वक्ता हमारे साथ उनका अनुभव शेयर करने वाले हैं जब हम इस वेबिनार की तैयारी कर रहे थे तो टॉपिक्स फाइनल हुए स्पीकर्स फाइनल हुए लेकिन इसका शीर्षक क्या रखने का ये सोच रहे थे हमारी मार्गदर्शक अध्यक्षा नीमा उमस फोरम की इमीजिएट ट्रांसप्रेशन साधना कुलकर्णी मैम ने एक बहुत ही समर्पक उचित आई ए शीर्षक का सुझाव दिया ये इसके तीन मीनिंग्स है आई मतलब ऑल अबाउट इनफर्टिटी इन ऑल में ए में ए इक्वल ऑल एल लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी एंड एल लैब लैपटो आई का दूसरा मीनिंग है आयुर्वेदा प्लस एलोपैथी इक्वल इंटीग्रेशन हमारे संगठन का प्रमुख उपयोग आई मराठी में हम आई को माँ को आई कहते हैं और हर इनफर्टी के पेशेंट जो हमारे यहाँ आती है वो माँ बनने की या आई बनने की चाहत रख जाते हैं और इस सभी तीनों का मिलाप हमारे आई शीर्षक में है धन्यवाद साधना मैम ये बहुत ही समर्पक शीर्षक सुझाने के लिए हमारी ये छोटी सी कोशिश है कि आप सभी ज्ञान विघन करें और हमें बहुत ही उत्साहवर्धक प्रतिशत योजना के लिए मिला आए लेकिन अदर स्टेट से भी आए हरियाणा कर्नाटक दिल्ली इसके अलावा हमको कुछ इंटरनेशनल डेलीगेट्स भी रजिस्टर हुए हैं लगभग आज ही थ्री फिफ्टी टू का आंकड़ा क्रॉस किया है वेरीफाइड और कुछ मेंबर्स क्यू में हैं हम आशा करते हैं कि आप सभी का इस आई वेबिनार का आप अपने अपने प्रैक्टिस में फायदा हो और आपकी प्रैक्टिस और बढ़े ऐसे अलग अलग कार्यक्रम आयोजित करते रहते हैं हम आगे भी ऐसा हमें आगे भी ऐसा ही उत्साहवर्धक प्रतिशत मिले ऐसी अपेक्षा मैं निमा तरफ से रखती हूँ और मैं आपको विनती करती हूँ जो आप में से निमा सदस्य नहीं है वो तुरंत निमा की सदस्यता ले इस वेबिनार के आयोजन के लिए सेंट्रल एंड स्टेट एंड सेंट्रल स्टेट वुमेन्स फोरम के बहुत सारे वरिष्ठ सदस्यों का मार्गदर्शन और प्रोत्साहन मिला उनकी मैं आभारी हूँ धन्यवाद जय महाराष्ट्र जय निमा इनोग्रेशन फंक्शन की अध्यक्षता स्वीकार करने की विनती में डॉक्टर वैशाली पड़गम मैम जो अध्यक्ष है हमारे निमा उमस फोरम सेंट्रल की उनको विनती करती हूँ मैम आपकी अनुमति है मैम पड़गम मैम आ, शायद उनका आवाज नहीं आ पा रहा है और आज के इस कार्यक्रम के उद्घाटन में हमारी मार्गदर्शक निमा उमस फोरम की संस्थापक अध्यक्ष आदरणीय साधना कुलकर्णी मैम की सम्मति प्राप्त हुई हाँ चालू कीजिए प्लीज ओके अभी मैं कार्यक्रम को आगे बढ़ाते हुए हमारी महाराष्ट्र निमा उमस फोरम की अध्यक्षा 
आदरणीय डॉक्टर अनुश्री मुंडे मैडम को मुंडेवाड़ी मैडम को दीप प्रज्वलन के लिए आमंत्रित करना चाहती हूँ और टेक्निकल टीम को आमंत्रित करके दीप प्रज्वलन करने की अनुमति देती हूँ टेक्निकल टीम शिल्पा मैम धन्यवाद शिल्पा मैम अभी हम धन्वंतर के टेक्निकल टीम को रिक्वेस्ट करते हैं शिल्पा मैम अथ धन्वंतरी स्तवन नमा धन्वंतरिमादिदेव सुरासुर वंदित पाद पदम स्वच्छादिद्यम अंशुकसन मौलिम भोजने कालांबूद्वनांगं कटितट विला सच्चारुपीताबराढ़ वंदे धन्यवाद टेक्निकल टीम अब मैं डॉक्टर पल्लवी माने मैम को अनुरोध करना चाहती हूँ तो अपने अतिथियों का स्वागत करें डॉक्टर पल्लवी माने मैम थैंक यू नमस्ते मैं डॉक्टर पल्लवी प्रताप सिंह माने कोऑर्डिनेटर महाराष्ट्र स्टेट नेशनल इंटीग्रेटेड मेडिकल एसोसिएशन वुमेन्स फोरम महाराष्ट्र द्वारा आयोजित नेशनल ऑनलाइन वेबिनार आई मतलब ऑल अबाउट इन्फर्टिलिटी में उपस्थित नीमा सेंट्रल काउंसिल के प्रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर आशित आशुतोष कुलकर्णी सर सेक्रेटरी डॉक्टर शांतिलाल शर्मा सर ट्रेजरर डॉक्टर उमाका उमाशंकर पांडे सर आईपीपी डॉक्टर विनायक टेम्बुर्णीकर सर नीमा वुमेन्स फोरम सेंट्रल काउंसिल के प्रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर वैशाली पड़घम मैडम सेक्रेटरी डॉक्टर मृणमय माखोदकर मैडम ट्रेजरर डॉक्टर रश्मि शर्मा मैडम आईपीपी डॉक्टर साधना कुलकर्णी मैडम नीमा महाराष्ट्र स्टेट के प्रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर तुषार सूर्यवंशी सर सेक्रेटरी डॉक्टर मोहन यांदे सर ट्रेजरर डॉक्टर सोपान खर्चे सर आईपीपी डॉक्टर सुहास जाधव सर और निमा वुमेन्स फोरम महाराष्ट्र स्टेट के आईपीपी डॉक्टर स्वप्ना जगदाड़े मैडम आज के स्पीकर डॉक्टर दीपाली चिंसोले मैम डॉक्टर प्रियंका नाकाटे मैम डॉक्टर अमिता काकड़े मैम और वेबिनार के लिए उपस्थित सभी शाखाओं के पी मान्यवर डॉक्टर्स स्टूडेंट्स का नीमा वुमेन्स फोरम की तरफ से तहे दिल से मैं हार्दिक स्वागत करती हूँ थैंक यू धन्यवाद डॉक्टर मैं अपनी अध्यक्षा डॉक्टर अनुश्री मैम को वेलकम स्पीच के लिए आमंत्रित करना चाहती हूँ डॉक्टर अनुश्री मैम थैंक यू प्रज्ञा मैम गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर अनुश्री मुंडेवाड़ी नीमा वुमेन्स फोरम महाराष्ट्र स्टेट प्रेसिडेंट 
It's my immense pleasure to welcome you all, respected dignitaries of state run and state council, and the respected delegates of Nima Women's Forum, Maharashtra State. As we all know, Nima has completed 75 years of association last year. Nima has prayed nationwide. Nima helps each and every ISM graduate member in issues dealing with integrated practice, Ayurvedic practice, appointments and honorium, medical legal issues, and social issues too. Nima has fought many judiciary battles to pursue uniqueness and carving from freedom. To give more substantial representation to women ISM graduates, Dr. Sadhana Kulkarnima has formed Nima Women's Forum. The ISM graduates are the backbone of country's health system. Nima has been working tirelessly in urban and rural areas for health issues. With encompassing this Nima's vision, Nima Women's Forum Maharashtra State has arranged national webinar series focused on understanding and navigating the challenges of infertility and management by integrated practice. So I take forward you all to the national webinar series, I, all about infertility, featuring eight expert faculties, eight stations, total 16 plus hours of live lectures, time to 30 to 500. All recorded video accesses, discussion and doubt clearance, and online certification too. Okay. So, um, unlocking the hope of national web series on overcoming infertility, and we'll help the babies in our day-to-day -day practice as some graduates are the backbone of country's health system and help the needy and the common man and uh, the needy uh, which don't have a penny too. So I I will find everyone satisfactory with this lecture series and give more importance to the uh, more uh, importance to the academic phase too. So we will have so join us online for the eight sessions in the month of October and be with us and have satisfactory academic fix. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Dhanyavad, Anushri, ma'am. As we work on our inauguration ceremony, my other name is Sadhna, ma'am. I want to ask you, ma'am, please, I want to ask you, and I want to ask you, Sadhna, ma'am. Sadhna, ma'am. Dhanyavad, Pradhyaya. आज के इस उद्घाटन समारोह में उपस्थित नीमा सेंट्रल के अध्यक्ष जिनकी हर सांस और ध्यास नीमा संगठन के लिए है ऐसे डॉक्टर आशुतोष कुलकर्णी सर सेक्रेटरी डॉक्टर यूएस फंडे सर ट्रेजरर डॉक्टर शर्मा सर नीमा विमेंस फोरम सेंट्रल की अध्यक्षा डॉक्टर वैशाली पड़धान सेक्रेटरी डॉक्टर मासोत्कर ट्रेजर डॉक्टर रश्मि शर्मा ये त्रिमूर्ति के हाथों में अभी हमने आ, अपना विमेन्स फोरम सेंट्रल का साम्राज्य सौंपा है ये त्रिमूर्ति अपनी शक्ति एक करके संगठन का विकास करेगी ये मुझे विश्वास है यहाँ पर हमारे महाराष्ट्र राज्य निमा के अध्यक्ष डॉक्टर सूर्यवंशी सेक्रेटरी डॉक्टर येंडे ट्रेजर डॉक्टर सोपान खर्चे उपस्थित हुए हैं ये हमारा यंग डायनेमिक और टेक्नो सेवी ऐसा नेतृत्व है और उनके नेतृत्व में हमारा महाराष्ट्र नीमा काम कर रहा है हमारे विमेन्स फोरम की आईपीपी डॉक्टर स्वप्ना जगदाड़े यहाँ भी यहाँ उपस्थित है जिसने अथक परिश्रम करके संगठन से को बहुत आगे बढ़ाया है अभी इस कार्यकाल के विमेन्स फोरम की अध्यक्षा डॉक्टर अनुश्री मुंडेवाड़ी जो एक सक्षम नेतृत्व हमें मिला है नथिंग इज इम्पॉसिबल ऐसी सोच दिमाग में रख के और यही सोच पे दौड़ दौड़ने वाली बहुत एंथुजियास्टिक ऐसी हमारी सेक्रेटरी है डॉक्टर प्रज्ञा खोसे 
अत्यंत मृदुभाषी सिंसियर और सबको साथ लेके चलने वाली हमारी ट्रेजर डॉक्टर मीनाक्षी सराटकर हैप्पी बर्थडे टू यू मीनाक्षी और पूरे भारत में भारत से उपस्थित विमेंस फोरम के सदस्यों को मैं वंदन करती हूँ ये मेरे लिए एक गौरवशाली पल है कि आई वेबिनार का उद्घाटन का उद्घाटन करने का सम्मान मुझे मिला है आई यानी माँ बनने की चाहत हर महिला में होती है लेकिन किसी कारणवश अगर वो माँ नहीं बनना चाहती वो ना माँ नहीं बन बन पाती तो उस, उसका सॉल्यूशन भी हमें ये उसका सॉल्यूशन भी हमें ये आई वेबिनार से ही मिलने वाला है महाराष्ट्र विमेंस फोरम का सब सर्वप्रथम मैं दिल से अभिनंदन करती हूँ कि इतना अच्छा विषय इनफर्टिलिटी और रेलेवेंट सब्जेक्ट हमारे सामने उन्होंने वेबिनार के स्वरूप में रखा है मंत्र सत्यम पूजा सत्यम सत्यम देवो निरंजन गुरुर्वाक्यम सदा सत्यम सत्यम एव परंत परंत ये वेबिनार में हमें विद्वान कुशल कर्माभ्यासी महानुभवों से ज्ञान प्राप्त होने वाला है उसी तरह से वेबिनार में हमारे वेबिनार में जो सब चेयरमैन है वो भी नीमा ओबीजीवाई सोसाइटी सेंट्रल के पदाधिकारी है उनकी एक्सपर्टीज उनका शास्त्राभ्यास का भी हमें लाभ होने वाला है इन सब गुरु को मैं वंदन करती हूँ आई हमारा पहला गुरु रहता है और हमारे इस आई के माध्यम से ही हम आज समृद्ध होने वाले हैं हमारे सभी सदस्य इस वेबिनार से अपडेट होंगे और उसका उपयोग अपने प्रैक्टिस में जरूर करेंगे और उससे उनके रुग्ण जो है वो लाभान्वित होंगे ऐसी मुझे ऐसा मुझे विश्वास है हम जब कोई कार्यक्रम या वेबिनार या कौन सी भी एक्टिविटी हमारे संगठन के तरफ से करते हैं तो संगठन के स्तर पर सदस्यों के स्तर पर वैयक्तिक स्तर पर और सामाजिक स्तर पर उसका अच्छा प्रभाव पड़ना चाहिए ये हमारा ये हमारी हमेशा भूमिका होनी चाहिए संगठन की प्रति, प्रतिमा और अपने कार्यक्रम कार्यक्रम से ऊंची हो जाए संगठन में ज्यादा से ज्यादा सदस्य जुड़ते रहे सभी सदस्यों की यूनिटी हो बॉन्डिंग हो मिलजुल कर काम करने की शक्ति रहे उत्साह बढ़े और समाज में संगठन के बारे में एक सकारात्मक और रचनात्मक संदेश जाए ऐसा आ, ऐसा हमारे कार्यक्रम के द्वारा उद्दिष्ट होना चाहिए और ये उद्दिष्ट ये वेबिनार से आ, सफल होगा अशी, ऐसी मुझे आशा है व्यक्तिगत स्तर पे भी हमारा विकास करने के लिए विमेंस फोरम ये एक अति उत्तम ऐसा व्यासपीठ हमें मंच हमें मिला है संगठन के लिए ये काम करते 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 हमारे अंदर हमें मालूम नहीं होती ऐसी खूबियां उभर कर बाहर आती है और हम समृद्ध होते जाते रहते हैं और यही हमारा पर्सनालिटी डेवलपमेंट है तो मेरी सभी सदस्यों से प्रार्थना है कि इस वेबिनार को सफल होने के लिए ज्यादा से ज्यादा सहयोग दे आई वेबिनार का उद्घाटन हुआ है ऐसे मैं घोषित करती हूँ और मुझे उद्घाटन उद्घाटक होने का सम्मान दिया इसलिए मैं बहुत बहुत आभारी हूँ धन्यवाद एंड महाराष्ट्र विमेंस फोरम रॉकिंग थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू वेरी मच मैम ये हमारा सौभाग्य का आपने उद्घाटन किया आ, आज के इस समारोह में सेंट्रल और स्टेट न्यूज से सभी पदाधिकारी उपस्थित है वक्त के कारण हम सभी को चांस नहीं दे पा रहे हैं लेकिन उनके प्रतिनिधि के स्वरूप में हम आज महाराष्ट्र निमा के अपने अध्यक्ष डॉक्टर तुषार सर सूर्यवंशी सर को शुभेच्छा देने के लिए मैं आमंत्रित करती हूँ तुषार सर ऑडिबल आवाज सर आवाज थैंक यू मैडम रिस्पेक्टेड आशुतोष कुलकर्णी सर 
सत्य मुरनीकर सर पांडे सर शर्मा सर आईपीपी साधना कुलकर्णी मैडम पड़गन मैडम आवर आईपीपी डॉक्टर सुहास जाधव सर द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ निमा वुमन्स फ्रम मुंडेवाड़ी मैडम खोसे मैडम मीनाक्षी सरटकर मैडम जगदा मैडम एंड ऑल द प्रेजेंट डेलिगेट्स ऑफ दिस कॉन्फरन्स अभ्यास प्राप्त दृष्टि ही कर्म सिद्धि प्रकाशिनी अभ्यास करेंगे तो ही दृष्टि मिलेंगी और उसको कर्म अभ्यास में हम रिप्रोड्यूस कर सकते हैं सो आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ निमा महाराष्ट्र ब्रांच फॉर दिस इनोवेटिव प्रोजेक्ट ऑफ निमा मोहन फ्रॉम आई एज अर्लियर एक्सप्लेन आई वॉट इज आई आयुर्वेदा इंटीग्रेशन एंड एलोपैथी विद दैट मैडम हैज टू अडर्स दैट इट्स ऑल अबाउट इनफर्टिलिटी टूडे इन दिस मॉडर्न एरा Infertility is one of the most uh, prevalent diseases we see among the society, and uh, with uh, innovative modern concepts, and with uh, the newly uh, following trends of Ayurveda and the basic Ayurvedic protocols, I think so. All the <coughs> delegates will be benefited with a new vision for their practice in regards with infertility. Today, with this Ashtang as Ashtang Ayurved. Uh, gives us uh, the eight uh, angles of ayurveda these uh, eight uh, eight lectures in this conference will give eight different visions for treating infertility i congratulate the team of nima women's forum maharashtra branch and uh, thank you for the blessings by nima central also for this conference and my best wishes for all the organizers and all the chairmen and the lecturers for this conference i hope this conference will deliver new vision to all of you thank you for coming yeah. dhanyawad dhanyawad to shab suran ji sir aaj hum khud ko gauravnit mehsoos karte hain ki hamare beech hamare margadarshak aur prerna sthan nima center ke agarniya adhyaksh ashutosh kulkarni sir upasthit hai main sir se anurodh karti hu कि वो हमारे इस कार्यक्रम को शुभेच्छा दे हमको सुनकर मुझे इसका एक आधा ऐसा स्टैंड होना था रखने का सर कुलकर्णी सर लेफ्ट हो चुके हैं टेक्निकल डिफिकल्टी होगी अशुतोष कुलकर्णी शायद टेक्निकल डिफिकल्टी आ रही होंगी और ट्रेवलिंग कर रहे हैं ना सर ज्वाइन होने के बाद वापस हम उनका उनकी शुभेच्छा लेंगे उनका गाइडेंस लेंगे कार्यक्रम के अंतिम पड़ा कार्यक्रम की अध्यक्षा आदरणीय डॉक्टर वैशाली पड़घम मैम को मैं विनंती करती हूँ कि वो अपना अध्यक्ष समारोह करें ऑडिबल यस यस ओके नमामि धन्वंतरी गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर्स अटेंडिंग द वेबिनार ऑल ओवर इंडिया पर एड्स फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड आई एम डॉक्टर वैशाली पड़गान प्रेसिडेंट वुमेन्स फोरम सेंटर माय रिगार्ड्स टू प्रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर कुलकर्णी सर साधना मैम पांडे सर शर्मा जी डॉक्टर सुरवंशी सर येडे सर सोपान सर एंड डॉक्टर मुंडेरी मैडम एंड ऑल पी एस टी महाराष्ट्र वुमेन्स फोरम to the grand response to the webinar arranged by women's forum maharashtra state i saw two uh, members are registering uh, for the webinar and it's really very proud moments uh, for all of us uh, this means that uh, it gives us satisfaction the benefit what we have uh, how we have started this women's forum is now uh, really uh, going to be fulfilled because we are we, we all are uh, doing very really good work. the subject infertility uh, is an immense problem in society the name i is a really great name as it uh, has meaning all about infertility it shows and i in marathi 
it means mother uh, it really shows the affection love importance in our life the eight days uh, this uh, lecture series is of eight days uh, from 3rd to 27th october uh, this is really like ashtanga of infertility it will explain each and every scientific and treatment point of in infertility which will help us in our day to day uh, practice women's forum is working very hard and sincerely all over india uh, they are arranging cme they are doing some health checkup camps they are uh, uh, doing social work and also uh, together they are enjoying some trips or some uh, tyohar and everything really they are uh, all are uh, working very enthusiastically and we are very proud of that eight states we are now having a women's forum uh we still want to increase the numbers of branches all over india uh, so uh, we can arrange such webinars and when all uh, ladies doctors will uh, join such webinars they will uh, see the importance of uh, our sanghatana neema and women's forum this webinar has huge response from maharashtra from all over india and some delegates have also uh, participated from abroad it's really a, a pleasure moment for us thanks to all the eminent speakers who had given the valuable time to share their knowledge with us uh, today speaker dr dipali chinsoli is very good friend of uh, um thanks all of you uh, best wishes to the phd maharashtra women's forum a successful hoping to see from you and all other uh, state uh, branches uh, in future work i want to pray सर्वे भवन सर्वे भवन सर्वे सन्त निरामया सर्वे भद्राणी पश्यु मा कचिद दुख मापया ऑल द बेस्ट एंड थैंक्स थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम अभी मैं अपने कार्यक्रम के कार्यक्रम के फाइनेंस का डिपार्टमेंट अकेले दम पर संभालने वाली नीमा उमंस अध्यक्षा डॉक्टर विनाश सरटकर मैम को ओट ऑफ के लिए बुला थैंक यू मैम चिकित्सकों के देवता तथा देवताओं के चिकित्सक ऐसे भगवान श्री धन्वंतरी को नमन करके मैं अपना आभार प्रदर्शन का कार्य जो सचिव मैम ने मुझे सौंपा है मैं प्रस्तुत करती हूँ नीमा के महाराष्ट्र नीमा वुमेन्स फोरम की ओर से आयोजित इस वेबिनार में नीमा वुमेन्स फोरम की कोषाध्यक्षा मीनाक्षी सराटकर आप सबको अभिवादन करके आज के कार्यक्रम के लिए ऑनलाइन उपस्थित या जो उपस्थित ना हो सके या जो हमें पता ना चल सके उन सभी महानुभावों का मैं आभार व्यक्त करना चाहती हूँ कृतज्ञता व्यक्त करना चाहती हूँ सर्वप्रथम हमारे केंद्रीय नेतृत्व जो आज भी बहुत बिजी है बहुत ज्यादा व्यस्त दिनचर्या से उन्होंने हमारे लिए समय समय पर हमारे लिए समय निकालकर हमें मार्गदर्शन किया क्वेश्चंस पूछते रहे मुझे तो सर का बिल्कुल स्पेशली कहना था कि देखो मैम अगर किसी ने नहीं किया है रजिस्ट्रेशन वो ज्वाइन हो गया तो चलेगा लेकिन रजिस्ट्रेशन किया है ज्वाइन नहीं हुआ ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए लेकिन फिर भी टेक्निकी तकनीकी कुछ कंस्टेट के कारण ऐसा हो सकता है सर का मैं तहे दिल से मैं आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ सर एक अतिशय दूरदर्शिता वाले और समर्पित नेतृत्व है उनको मैं सिर्फ एक ही शब्द से नवाजती हूँ एनसाइक्लोपीडिया ऑफ नीमा हमारे केंद्रीय सचिव सर डॉक्टर उमाशंकर जी पांडे सर आज शायद उपस्थित ना हो पाए उनके प्रति भी मैं आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ उन्होंने एक कुशल आयोजन का वस्तु पाठ हमारे सामने रखा है हमारे केंद्रीय कोषाध्यक्ष शांतिलाल जी शर्मा सर भी शायद अन्य कार्यों में व्यस्त होने के कारण मुझे अभी यहाँ ऑनलाइन तो नहीं दिख रहे हैं सर थैंक यू सर उनके उनका भी हमेशा कोषाध्यक्ष के रूप में मुझे मार्गदर्शन प्राप्त होते रहता है हमारी वुमेन्स फोरम की नव नवनिर्वाचित अध्यक्षा नवनियुक्त अध्यक्षा वैशाली पड़गन मैम जो खुद ऊर्जा उत्साह प्रोत्साहन की मूर्ति है हमेशा प्रोत्साहित करती रहती है मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर एवरीथिंग 
हमारी केंद्रीय सचिव मासोत्कर मैम में मासोत्कर मैम जो नागपुर से है मेरी फ्रेंड भी है मुझे लगता है तो उनके पास कुछ चुंबक जैसी बात है कि जो जिले के बाद शहर के बाद शहर जिले के बाद जिले राज्य के बाद राज्य लोगों को आकर्षित करती रहती है निमा से जोड़ती रहती है मैम आगे और बार बार मुझे हर बात पर सलाह देती है साबक भी करती है और प्रोत्साहित प्रोत्साहित भी करती है मैम थैंक यू आप, आपके तो मतलब आपके तो रूल में मैं रहना चाहूंगी आ, सेंट्रल के आईपीपी इमीजिएट पास प्रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर विनायक जी टेमुर्कर सर जिनके प्रदीर्घ काला कार्यकाल में ही निमा वुमेन्स फोरम का गठन हुआ है आ, बहुत अधिक निर्णय क्षम समर्पित और हमेशा मार्गदर्शन प्रोत्साहन देने वाले टेमुर्कर सर के रूल में मैं हमेशा रहने चाहूंगी उनके प्रति मैं कृतज्ञता व्यक्त करती हूँ और हमारी आई हम जिन्हें आई के रूप में माँ के रूप में ही जानते हैं उन्हें आईपीपी क्या कहना पास्ट तो उनके साथ ये वर्ड नहीं जुड़ सकता है साधना मैम जो मजबूती और कोमलता का एकदम विरला एग्जांपल है बहुत बार रहते मैडम कोमल है मैडम कोमल है मैडम कुछ नहीं कहेगी लेकिन मैडम का बराबर ध्यान रहता है वो हमेशा सचेत करती रहती है और गाइड तो हमेशा करती है और सामने वाला घबरा भी ना जाए इतनी कोमल भी रहती है मैम खुद भी मैडम ने इतना अच्छा इतिहास लिखा है निमा का मैडम खुद जर्नलिस्ट भी है जर्नलिज्म का उन्होंने कोर्स किया हुआ है मैम के बारे में तो कहने के लिए ही एक पूरा सेशन रहेगा मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू और केंद्रीय निमा उमस फोरम की कोषाध्यक्ष रश्मि शर्मा मैम इनसे पंद्रह बीस दिनों में ही मेरी कुछ पार्टी हुई है लेकिन उसी में उनका जो सचेत कोषाध्यक्ष मैंने देखा है मैम फंड्स आना चाहिए मैम फंड्स आना चाहिए हेड्स अप टू यू रश्मि मैम थैंक यू और निमा महाराष्ट्र के अध्यक्ष तुषार सूर्यवंशी सर इनके प्रति भी मैं आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ युवा और ऊर्जावान और समय का बहुत अधिक प्रबंधन करने वाले तुषार सूर्यवंशी सर इनका भी हमेशा मार्गदर्शन मार्गदर्शन की वजह से ही यह सब संभव हो पाया है सर थैंक यू और मोहन इंडे सर हमारे बहुत ही ऊर्जावान सचिव योजक तत्र दुर्लभ जो बोलते हैं वो हमारे मोहन एंडे सर है वो क्या क्या नियोजन करते हैं क्या क्या आयोजन करते हैं क्योंकि उनके घर को उनके जी को और जब से स्टूडेंट है तब से उनके कार्यकाल को मैं देखती हूँ और अभी उन्होंने जो संभाली है कमान उस पर जो उनकी कमान है वो भी मैं देख रही हूँ सर को सर तहे दिल से आपका धन्यवाद थैंक यू और आगे भी आपसे ऐसे ही सहकार्य की अपेक्षा रहेगी और सबसे ज्यादा मार्गदर्शन मिलता है और चेतावनी मिलती है ऐसे हमारे निमा महाराष्ट्र के कोषाध्यक्ष डॉक्टर सोपान खर्चे सर सर थैंक यू सर हमेशा मुझे पता है मैडम ऐसा हो सकता है ऐसा क्या है थैंक यू सर थैंक यू और भविष्य में भी ऐसे ही सचेत करते रहिएगा और हमारी महाराष्ट्र विमेन्स फोरम की टीम अध्यक्ष अनुश्री मुंदेवाड़े मैम बिल्कुल मैम आगे बढ़ो हो जाएगा ज्यादा चिंता मत करो हमेशा मार्गदर्शन जहां भी उनको लगा मित भाषी और कार्य में ज्यादा विश्वास रखने वाली अनुश्री मैम थैंक यू और प्रज्ञा को से मैम <laughs> ये मेरी सहेली भी है सलाह भी देती है सचेत भी करती है मदद भी करती है और चौबीस घंटे में अड़तालीस घंटे हंसती रहती है मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर योर कोऑपरेशन गाइडेंस एंड पल्लवी माने मैम कोऑर्डिनेटर हम चारों में सब एज में सबसे छोटी होने के कारण हम सबको हक लगता है पल्लवी मैम इतना कर देना पल्लवी पल्लवी इतना कर देना पल्लवी मैम उतना करेगी यस मैम इस मैम इस मैम दौड़ती रहती है पल्लवी मैम थैंक यू और गिरीश डागा सर और मनीष जोशी सर क्या कहूँ टेक्निकल गाइड भी है टेक्निकल लीडर भी है मैं बोलती हूँ टेक्निकल पैटर्न एज पैटर्न है हमारे सर को क्योंकि हमारी तो ऐसी ऐसी डिफिकल्टी रहती है कि बाद में हमें हंसी आती है हम सर से बात करते हैं सर हमको बता देते हैं सर थैंक यू और की वजह से ये तो वेबिनार उन्हीं के या इंटरनेट के वजह से ही हम ये संभव हो पाया है 
हमारी टेक्निकल टीम जो शिल्पा कोरानी मैम के नेतृत्व में काम कर रही है एक सेंटेंस में बोलू तो उन्होंने कल एक घंटे में हमको डिप्लोमा दे दिया आई का इतनी सारी बातें उन्होंने एक घंटे में हमको समझा दी मैम थैंक यू अ बिग थैंक यू और सबसे ज्यादा करीबी मेरी सहकारी रूपाली डांगोरे जो हमारी फाइनेंस टीम है उसमें मेरी सहकारी जो नागपुर निमा वुमेन्स फोरम की अध्यक्ष है और हाल ही में नागपुर निमा ने आयुर निमा का बड़ा आयोजन किया उसमें भी उसने बहुत बड़ा काम बहुत बड़ा योगदान उसका रहा है उसमें से भी उसने समय निकाल कर जितना सहकार्य किया रूपाली थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच और आगे भी अपने को बहुत सारा काम करना है अभी सबसे अधिक तो धन्यवाद मुझे देना चाहिए जो ह्यूज रिस्पांस मिला है इंडिया से पहले तो ये महाराष्ट्र में ही था लेकिन साधना मैम ने बोला वैशाली मैम ने बोला कि नहीं आपको ये बढ़ाना है ऑल ओवर इंडिया आशुतोष कुलकर्णी सर ने बोला था मुझे लगा था कि ऑल ओवर इंडिया से कितने रिस्पॉन्सेस आएंगे कुछ थोड़े बहुत जो जिनके नाम हम हमेशा सुनते रहते हैं पीएसटी वगैरह लोग लेकिन काफी काफी बहुत अच्छा रिस्पांस ऑल ओवर इंडिया से भी मिला महाराष्ट्र से भी मिला और मिल रहा है मिलते जा रहा है शायद बीच बीच में जो टुन 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 जो आवाज आ रही है ना वो रिस्पांस की आवाज है फाइव हंड्रेड फाइव हंड्रेड जो तो थैंक यू हार्ट फेल थैंक्स टू दूज रिस्पॉन्स वर्बल बट मॉनिटरी रिस्पॉन्स टू ऑल ओवर इंडिया सभी के लिए और सभी सभी को मेरा तहे दिल से धन्यवाद शायद समय अभाव में मैं जिनका उल्लेख करना भूल भी गई हो आज के को चेयरपर्सन मेरी फ्रेंड अमिता कुकड़े मैम दीपाली चिंचोले मैम सबका सबका मैं तहे दिल से धन्यवाद करती हूँ थैंक यू और मैं सबसे कृतज्ञ रहना चाहती हूँ मैं कृतज्ञता व्यक्त करती हूँ और जिनका भी नाम गलती से मैं भूल गई हो उन सभी का मैं धन्यवाद करती हूँ थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम अभी आशुतोष कुलकर्णी सर का फोन आया था उन्होंने फोन से हमें वेबिनार के लिए हमारी टीम के लिए और सब कैंडिडेट्स के लिए शुभेच्छा दी है वो कारण की वजह से जुड़ नहीं पा रहे है तो अगर बीच में जुड़ गए तो हमको शुभेच्छा देंगे अभी मैं ये सेशन की समाप्ति करते हुए आगे के सेशन के लिए पल्लवी मैम को और सॉरी फॉर डिले ओके पल्लवी मैम ओवर टू पल्लवी थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल यस थैंक यू प्रज्ञा मैम अब वो वक्त आ चुका है जिसके लिए हम सब मान्यवर डॉक्टर्स जूम प्लेटफॉर्म पर इकट्ठा हुए हैं सौभाग्य से आज हमें चेयरपर्सन डॉक्टर प्रियंका नाकाड़े मैडम जी उपलब्ध हुई है वह स्त्री रोग प्रसूति तज्ञ है इनफर्टिलिटी स्पेशलिस्ट और लैप्रोस्कोपिक सर्जन है उन्होंने एम एस आयुर्वेद ऑफ गायनेक कोल्हापुर से डिप्लोमा इन गायनेक एंड ऑफ पूना से बी एम एस नागपुर से एफ एम ए एस डी एम ए एस एफ आई ए आर टी जैसी डिग्रियां हासिल की है हमारा भाग्य है कि मैडम आज हमें चेयरपर्सन के रूप में उपलब्ध हुई है निमा वुमेंस फोरम की तरफ से मैं आपका स्वागत करती हूं मैडम आज के हमारे को चेयरपर्सन डॉक्टर अमिता कुकड़े मैडम जी का मैं निमा वुमेंस फोरम की तरफ से स्वागत करती हूं मैडम निमा वुमेंस फोरम की महाराष्ट्र स्टेट की उपाध्यक्षा है तीस सालों से वह निमा से संलग्न है और चौबीस सालों से वो वैद्यकीय क्षेत्र में है और उन्हें आगे का निवेदन करने के लिए मैं विनती करती हूँ थैंक यू ओवर टू यू मैम थैंक्स डॉक्टर थैंक यू वेरी मच इट्स माय इमेंस प्लेजर टू इंट्रोड्यूस अवर टुडे स्पीकर डॉक्टर दीपाली चिंचोले मैम डॉक्टर दीपाली चिंचोले अवर स्पीकर फॉर टुडे इज मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर ऑफ एकॉर्ड हॉस्पिटल she has taken pioneering steps in the field of infertility she is having 22 years of experience in obstetric and gynecology and her major contribution for first stage to baby in bulhana district maharashtra is applicable a compassionate individual she drives to achieve her life goal of offering affordable world class technology driven healthcare services to all she is self disciplined herself to offer high tech 
fertility rate even in absence of strong policy framework in our country she has been rewarded a fellowship at asia pacific institute of embryology singapore and fellowship in infertility at rcog london her doctoral fellowship covered study of reproduction including reproductive endocrinology ovarian biology reproductive immunology and the genetics of fertility dr deepali ma'am spearheads the infertility department at accord hospital and also guides the operations and management team at the hospital on a regular basis and i am happy to say that she is the recipient of the save woman entrepreneur of the year 2018 for outstanding work done in the healthcare industry we are delighted to have such a strong personality as a speaker for today's webinar today's topic is applied anatomy of female genital organs and physiology of mc and oc before starting the lecture i would like to request you all to put yourself on mute and whatever queries or questions you all will have please put them in the chat box all your queries will be solved after lecture during question and answer round now i would like to request dr deepali ma'am to start our today's session ma'am please please good afternoon am i audible yes audible yeah ma'am yeah and this uh, uh, you can see the screen yeah ma'am yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so good afternoon all i extend my warm regards to respected good afternoon all i extend my warm regards to all the pst members of the central and maharashtra nima as well as nima women's forum and my special thanks to the organizing committee especially dr anushree ma'am dr pradnya ma'am dr manakshi ma'am and dr pallavi ma'am my special warm regards to my dear friend dr vaishali and i am truly excited to be with you all today and i really thank for giving me this opportunity to interact with you all and truly amazed to see the response for this webinar so i'll just have the screen sharing so as per the title of the today's uh, lecture goes uh, or, your, or your cme goes is i so these are the two strong women in my life who have made me and have got me here today so i i would take their blessings before starting this session so the topic given to me was applied anatomy of the female genital tract and physiology of menstrual cycle and ovarian cycle a very tough one and had to study a lot for the same but still i have tried my level best so whatever i could i could gather and i could do i'm trying to do it and i hope you all bear with it so welcome to this amazing world of motherhood journey though this journey through this world seems a bit complicated a bit messy but truly it will be very enchanting and mesmerizing so what exactly is a female reproductive system it's a group of organs that together work together to enable women to menstruate copulate and reproduce 
It is particularly designed to produce the female egg cells necessary for reproduction, which are called the ova or the oocytes, to transport the eggs or the ova to the site of fertilization, to facilitate the fertilization of an egg by a sperm, and implantation of the fertilized egg and its further growth. It is designed to menstruate, that is the monthly shedding and uterine lining, if fertilization and implantation doesn't take place. In addition to producing the female sex hormones that maintains the reproductive cycle. These are the, the reproductive system is divided into two, that is the external and the internal. The externally particularly, which is called as the vulva, it has the clitoris, the labia majora, the labia minora, and the vaginal opening. All these have been des designated for certain function, that is clitoris, is special, special, especially for the sex sexual... Uh, one second. Arousal, labia majora are particularly for production uh, protection, labia minora for lubrication. As we all know that labia, labia minora has the Bartholin's glands, which are which secrete certain uh, secretions which maintain the lubrication and the vaginal opening. The internal organs are the fallopian tubes, ovaries, uterus, cervix, and vagina, which I'm going to detail in my further slides. So the internal or genital organ forms a pathway, the genital tract. The pathway consists of the vagina, where the sperms are deposited and from which a baby can emerge. The cervix, which is the lower part of the uterus, where the sperm enter and which opens when a pregnant woman is ready to give birth. Uterus, where an embryo can develop into a fetus. Fallopian tubes are also called as oviducts, where sperm can fertilize an egg after traveling through the cervix and uterus. Ovaries, which produce and release the eggs. So this video will take you through the journey of the anatomy, as well as the basics of conception, which are, which are very important to understand if you have to understand infertility. So these, this is the uterus. On the two sides of the uterus, there are two ovaries. And along with the ovaries, are these, these are the two tubes. And this is the cervix, which opens in the vagina. Now, what happens is that every cycle in the ovary, one egg matures and comes out of the ovary, which is called as, the process is called as ovulation, and it traverses through the tube and comes down into the uterus. Now, if at this particular time, sexual intercourse takes place, the sperms are deposited in the vagina and through the cervix, the sperms travel in the uterus to the tube and up to the egg. And if the egg is fertilized here, then the tube again releases the egg into the uterus. And if the, this fertilized egg implants in the uterus, the further growth of the baby is in the uterus. So that, that is why for infertility, four factors are very, very important. One is uterus, tube, ovaries, and the sperms. Now, going to the basic anatomy, vagina is a muscular tube that extends upwards and backwards from the vulva to the uterus. It measures about for three, three inches and has anterior and posterior walls. The upper and, and anterior wall is pierced by the cervix as we can see here. The area of the vaginal lumen which surrounds the cervix is divided into four regions or fornices, anterior, posterior and the two lateral. Now, what happens is why these fornices are important is the cervix, the basically the semen is deposited in the fornices. So if any of us are know about the postcoital test, we generally go in the posterior fornix and collect the secretions from there to study the sperms for the postcoital test. So these fornices are particularly important for that. Now, what exactly are the functions of the vagina? So basically it acts as a canal for menstrual fluid and tissue to leave the uterine cavity. It particularly has an immune defense mechanism system that is the protection against harmful pathogens via the acidic pH, to maintain the acidic pH. So now we say that vaginal secretions, but does vagina have any glands? No, there are no glands in the vagina. The secretions which are seen in the vagina are basically from the cervical glands. 
the second function third function of the vagina is the reproductive function as the receptacle to sperm and canal and the birth canal for the part during the parturition also the sexual function for female arousal response and sexual pressure vagina is very very important now what exactly is the clinical significance of vagina so vaginal dryness can cause so does it directly cause infertility no but painful sexual intercourse may be the reason of it may be because of the vaginal dryness these days i see many patients particularly in pune the patients they come down for infertility and i have seen almost i would say 10 to 15 patients who have come down for infertility after 4 5 days 4 5 years of marriage and it's very i was very very surprised to see that ki they really don't know ki what exactly a sexual intercourse means or they didn't have the sexual intercourse and this too in the educated class so it's very very important to make the patient understand the basic how the basic basics of conception are very very important and they should understand that and basically because of the painful sexual intercourse maybe they didn't go ahead and do it and that was the basic reason for infertility the congenital anomalies of the vagina or there may be a vaginal septum this may definitely lead to infertility but basically these would present particularly as amenorrhea primary amenorrhea the patients would have primary amenorrhea and the treatment here would only be vagina vaginoplasty or section of the septum imperforate hymen yes definitely this is important because if there is an imperforate hymen again there would be primary amenorrhea and hymenectomy is the only treatment where the, we can help the patient so coming to the cervix the cervix is a fibromuscular organ that links the uterine cavity to the vagina through two cylindrical we we feel that the cervix is cylindrical in shape but most of the times the anterior and the posterior walls are regularly opposed they are together the cervix is approximately 4 cm in length and 3 cm in diameter the cervix occupies both an internal and external position internal in the uterus and external in the vagina its lower half or the vagina intravaginal part lies at the upper end of the vagina and its upper half lies above the vagina that is in the pelvic and or the abdominal cavity the two parts are approximately of the same size the cervix lies between the bladder anteriorly and the bowel posteriorly laterally the ureters are in close proximity as the uterine artery superior this is particularly important not actually in a infertility but for the hysterectomy this is the position of the ureters is very very important now why this position of the cervix is important so now this is important because the uterus has two positions as we know it can be antiverted which is in 75% of the females the uterus is antiverted as here we can see it's an antiverted uterus or it is retroverted so this is an antiversion and the opposite would be the posterior so why this is important is in acutely antiverted uterus it is very very difficult at times to visualize the cervix so here i would give you a small tip that instead of going ahead with a sim speculum we should use a cusco speculum for regular examination why cusco because uh, it we feel many times that it is difficult but cusco we have it has two lips here we can see the two lips so that we have a proper visualization many times what happens is if the uterus is acutely antiverted we cannot see the cervix here my small tip would be ask the patient to fill her bladder generally for vaginal examination we ask the patient to empty bladder but if we have to do a per speculum examination we should ask the patient to hold the urine if the bladder is distended it will push the uterus backwards and you can you will be able to see the cervix properly this is very very important whenever we have to visualize the visualize the cervix or the os and if we have to do certain procedures like endometrial biopsy or in iuif in this procedures it is very very important to straighten this axis and that is why the position of the cervix is very very important now coming to cervical mucus now what exactly as i said ki vagina they don't have any glands the gla the secretions whatever whatever are there are from the cervix the cervical mucus it's a hydrogel consisting of 90 to 95% water and a heterogeneous mixture of certain mucin glycoproteins 
the physical properties and the biochemical why this is important is because the physical properties and the biochemical composition of the cervical mucus it changes during the menstrual cycle when the ovulation approaches the cervical mucus becomes thinner why because the it facilitates the sperm to enter so that if if it is thin the sperm will penetrate it in a better manner so during the ovulation cervical mucus becomes thinner and more wet, watery and it is so called as egg white cervical mucus as it resembles the raw egg white egg white cervical mucus is believed to preferable mucus for conception as it provides an easy pathway for the sperm to swim through the cervical mucus layer on the surface of the cervix works as a barrier to prevent infection cell surface and gel forming mucins produced by endocervical epithelium contribute to the formation of the mucus layer in the cervical canal in addition the quality of cervical mucus significantly influences the fertility as interactions with the cervical mucus affect the penetration of spermatozoa into the uterine cavity the cervical mucus also works as a lubricant during the sexual intercourse so that is why it is very very important that the cervical mucus is thin like a egg white so that the sperms can enter the uterine cavity easily so this is a small test which these days uh, due to the availability of the uh, um, luteinizing hormone kits has become absurd but it was a it is a very good simple test which the patient can follow that is the cervical mucus test where they can if they are, do it for 3 to 4 months they can just see the pattern and predict the ovulation now coming to the most important part of the reproductive Uh, system which is very very important is the fallopian tubes the fallopian tubes these are we know that they are paired tubular seromuscular organs their course runs medially from the cornu of the uterus towards the ovary laterally it's around 10 cm in uh, variation maybe from 7 to 14 cm the abdominal ostium the abdominal opening of the tube which is called as the infundibulum the circumference which is enhanced by irregular processes called the fimbria now why the circumference is in increased here is because they have to capture the egg which is which is supposed to come from the ovary so this fimbria are important for catching of the egg and then the infundibulum carries it to the ampulla now the ampulla is the most important part because actually the fertilization of the egg occurs here in the ampulla so this is actually a 1 or 2 cm in an outer diameter and the fertilization occurs here in the ampulla now the ampulla is succeeded by the isthmus a round and cord like structure constituting the medial one third of the tube and 0.5 to 1 cm in outer diameter last portion is the cornu or the interstitial portion of the tube continues from the isthmus through the uterine wall it is inside the uterine wall to empty into the uterine cavity this segment of the tube uh, is about 1 cm in length and 1 mm in inner diameter if we think of ectopic pregnancies ectopic pregnancies are most common in the ampulla but they can or infundibulum but they can grow to a longer period of gestation here because here the tube is more distensible but if it occurs at the isthmus or the cornu it is supposed to be more dangerous because The, the the gestational sac cannot grow here and it may cause the rupture very early rupture of the tube very very early so so the portions of the tubes or the parts of the tubes are important for that now tubal histology why tubal histology is important because as i said that the tube has to pick the egg up and carry it to the portion of the infundibulum where actually the fertilization occurs so the tubal wall consists of three layers internal mucosa intermediate muscular layer which is the myosalpings the outer serosa which is the mesosalpings the tubes act as ducts for the sperms oocytes and fertilize ovum transport in addition to being the normal site of fertilization these functions depend mainly on the three factors that is tubal function motility tubal cilia and tubal fluid so the tubal motility is important the tubal cilia inside uh, there are hair like structures to the mucosa which are important and the tubal fluid that is also important for all these functions of the tube now what is tubal motility 
as we know that intestinal peristalsis similarly the tube also have a peristaltic contractions of the smooth muscle fibers in the tubal wall which allows the sperms and the egg to be brought together thus allowing the fertilization and subsequent transport of the fertilization fertilized ovum from the normal site of fertilization in the ampulla to the normal site of implantation in the uterus the movement is primarily regulated by three intrinsic systems that is the estrogen progesterone hormonal milieu the movement of the tube and the ciliary movements are controlled by the estrogen and progesterone now estrogen acting at a receptor stimulate tubal motility whereas progesterone which activates the b receptors on the on the uh, tubes they inhibit the tubal motility so because the progesterone secretion is in the later half of the ovulation so they decrease the motility and that is why many times we see that ki maybe the patient have ectopic and this is actually ek varsh sari na ami ek visa pahila varante tana takes dakhalo mhanna jasto shibloko karay i think someone is sending me from म्यूट करा मैम अनम्यूट करा मैम आता म्यूट ऑल के लिए मैम दीपाली मैम अनम्यूट करा एक मिनट म्यूट ऑल नहीं चले मैम जस्ट गिव मी अ सेकंड कंट्रोल ऑफ इन at ovulation contractions of these tube it, they become vigorous and the mesosalping contracts to bring the tube in more contact with the ovary while fimbria contracts rhythmically to sweep over the ovarian surface as as progesterone level rises 4 to 6 days after ovulation it inhibits the tubal motility this may lead to relaxation of the tubal musculature to allow passage of the ovum into the uterus by the action of the tubal cilia now what exactly is the clinical significance of the tube now as we say that the tubes are the now most important part because the fertilization takes place here so abnormalities of the tubes have been implicated in up to one third of the infertility cases causes that may negatively impact the tube fallopian tube structure or functions include congenital absence or malformation Infections such as chlamydia, trachomatis, nizeria, gonorrhea, genital tuberculosis, endometriosis, adhesion, causing tubal distortion. If the tubes are distorted, there will be definitely the function will be distorted and the fertilization won't occur. A history of recurrent pelvic inflammatory disease related to these infections or history of intra-abdominal surgery leading to adhesions correlates with higher risk of tubal factor for infertility. an increasing number of past infections also correlates with the increased severity of damage to the fallopian tubes one thing which we need to precisely i would like to tell is ki only tubal opening is not important so if the hysterosalpingography shows that the tubes are open still if the patient is not getting pregnant with the regular treatments indirectly there may be an uh, it may be We, we we may have to do a laparoscopy to see that ki if the tubal motility is affected now we don't have any test to check for the tubal motility but we say that ki there is an indirect test which we say that ki if we do iui regularly iui for these patients what we are doing is ki we call it a tubal challenge test in these patients we call it a tubal challenge test if we do iui in these patients what we are doing is ki we are doing the iui at exactly at the time of ovulation so at one end of the tube we are giving the egg 
and we are replace placing the sperms inside the fundus inside the fundus at the fundus inside the uterus so indirectly we say that we are challenging the tubes if the tube is functional and we are placing the egg at one end and the sperm at the other if the tubes are normal the fertilization and pregnancy should happen so this uh, in these patients we do iua so we call it as a tubal challenge test now there are other factors like benign paratubal cyst which may be found incidentally on ultrasound and um, during surgeries these appear in middle age and they are usually asymptomatic the ampulla is the most common site as i told you for ectopic pregnancies which are either treated medically or removed surgically with salpingostomy removal of the fallopian tubes may be necessary for malignancies involving the ovary fallopian tube or uterus as well as benign conditions including hydrosalpings which are most of the times is because of the infections mentioned above and tubo ovarian abscesses which are basically during the uh, because of endometriosis severe endometriosis we see that there are tubo ovarian masses in this cases we have to remove the tubes and the only option the patient has is to go ahead with the in vitro fertilization tubal ligation as we know that is an option for patients which who desire the permanent sterilization because and this is the procedure which is carried out for permanent sterilization coming to the most important organ which is the uterus as we all know it's a pear shaped organ located in the female pelvis the uterus is a single inverted pear shaped organ situated in the pelvic cavity above the urinary bladder now the shape and size of the uterus it changes as the women grows in the nulliparous the uterus is about 7.5 cm long 5 cm wide and 1.75 uh, cm thick in multiparous who previously the uterus is larger and the shape is much more variable in frontal section is made the through the uterus several distinct regions are revealed so here we see that the, now there are um, uh, this is the fundus this is the body and this is the isthmus now this is the internal os and this is the external os now this is the uterine artery which sub, uh, supplies the uterus and this is the actually a triangular which is the uterine cavity now the layers of the uterus are very very important external surface of the uterus it is covered by a thin membrane of the peritoneum or which called as serosa is continuous with the layer covering the oviducts and the other peritoneal organs inside the perimetrium is a thick layer of smooth muscle which is called as the myometrium internal to the myometrium is the layer of the uterus that lines the uterine cavity the endometrium which is very very important for implantation the endometrium is again divided into two parts which is internal surface layer that is stratum functionalis and a deeper layer that is called as stratum basalis now stratum basalis from the stratum basalis the endometrium grows during the menstrual cycle the underlying stratum basalis it is not shed during menstruation but contains blood vessels that produce part of the menstrual blood flow here we can see that it is supplied by the blood so this is the basal layer and this is the functional layer after menstruation the stratum basalis gives rise to the new stratum the endometrium undergoes marked changes in structure and function during the menstrual cycle and these changes are under hormonal control so it is very very dynamic the endometrium is supposed to be dynamic because it is continuously changing so here we see that during the during the menses this it's only the stratum basalis and just the stratum functionalis is trying to grow this is the pre ovulatory phase the ovulatory phase and the post ovulatory phase and if the pregnancy occurs this this will continue and if the pregnancy doesn't occur this layer will shed off in the form of menses and only stratum basalis will remain now why endometrium is important is because that is basically the area where the connection of the mother and the fetus happens and so endometrial receptivity is very very important and it's still an enigma i would say because lot a lot and lot of work has been done on the endometrial receptivity and still i don't think so we know much about it because whatever most of the failure i would say 75% of ivf pregnancy failures are occurring in this area because we are really we are really failing to understand what what all factors are there which control this particularly function now what what exactly is this is the cellular events at the implantation in the ovum is endometrial receptivity 
the embryo enters the uterus as an unhatched blastocyst which which contains an inner cell mass an outer layer of trophoblastic and a blastocyst after hatching it becomes opposed to the this is the opposition it comes near to the endometrium then here is the adhesion and here it invades the uterus and goes inside the uterus the endometrium and these the these are the trophoblastic cells which are shed the latter continues now these continue as the decidual compartment to eventually invade and transfer transform the spiral artery so actually the connection happens here of the uterine blood and the fetal blood so why embryo maternal communication is very very impl important because implantation two factors are important a good embryo and a good endometrium the connection has to happen properly and this still as i told you is an area of concern for us all though we are doing lots of things but still it it is it is not sufficing to the purpose so now how the endometrial receptivity is achieved it is achieved by the actions of progesterone in the presence of estrogen progesterone alone cannot act on the you you uh, endometrial mucosa it has it has to be in the presence of estrogen estrogen has to act first and then only progesterone will act so that causes essential phenotypic changes in all the endometrial cells just before and during the mid secretory phase of most menstrual cycles should the receptivity not be attained implantation cannot takes place and any blastocyst present will be lost following ovulation the endometrium undergoes individually defined differentiation of all its cell types and implantation can only occur if this is fully with the so this there has to be a synchronization between the embryonic development and the development of the endometrium considerable and essential embryo molecular signaling occurs throughout the implantation process endometrial differentiation can be affected by many factors which are called as which are basically hormonal paracrine immune body mass index and probably aging along with the signaling from the embryo there has to be a signal from the embryo and there has to be a signal from the endometrium and that has to match now lots of adjuvant therapies to increase the endometrial receptivity has been tried like endometrial scratching what we do is ki during the hysteroscopy we just do a scratching or we um, do some prp installation as we do iui we instill prp that is plasma rich protein rich plasma that is uh, we also call that as stem cells immune therapies but these all are not don't have any statistically significant proven effect now new technologies are enabling greater knowledge of the molecular process underlying implantation and placentation currently there are no tests available that can accurately predict whether an embryo will implant in a particular cycle or not only things which we regularly do is ki we see for the hysteroscopy if there are no adhesions or something like that we see for the basically the regular test is the sonography where we see for the endometrial thickness and it has to be 8 to 10 cm but many patients we see that the endometrial thickness seems to be normal the endometrial looks normal but still the implantation doesn't occur so as i said there are lots of things which we still don't know and it's it's still an enigma so coming to the anomalies of the uterus there are the congenital abnormalities that are genital abnormalities now this is the normal uterus this is a didelphus uterus acute uterus unicornate uterus bicornate uterus and the septate uterus now do they affect the fertilization i would say not actually because many times what we see is ki during a cesarean section or after the patient be becomes pregnant we come to know about about these anomalies but yes when the patient is infertile comes for infertility and we see we see there is an anomaly we definitely have to treat them maybe the didelphus it's very difficult to treat we cannot do any surgeries but for acute uterus we we try and uh, resect the septum for the septate uterus we do the septal resection and we give those tries for the patient to increase the cavity of the uterus second uh, area of concern for the uterus is the 
development of the polyps. The uterus is affected by a variety of gynecologic disorders, including fibroid polyps, infections, malformations, and adhesions. The polyp, it is well circumcised collection of endometrial tissue within the uterine wall. This can be of any type. This is a pedunculated endometrial fibro, uh, endometrial polyp. This is a cervical polyp. It can be asymptomatic or present with painless abnormal uterine bleeding. Small polyps without symptoms might resolve on their own. Progestins and gonadotropin releasing hormones may lessen the symptoms of polyps. If a patient comes with infertility, we definitely have to treat them because we don't want any factor. We don't want, we want to rule out any, we don't want any obstructions in the endometrial cavity. Second area of concern is fibroid, which is a common benign tumor in females and often presents with multiple discrete tumors. In infertility, we are only concerned if the fibroid is indenting, the serosal, subserosal fibroid is indenting the uterine cavity or there's a pedunculated fibroid which is obstructing the endometrial cavity. If we generally go and treat otherwise, we leave them as, as they are and we try and treat the patient with other methods. Oral medications for fibroid, not very effective and generally surgery is advised. And if the patient, if it's a fertile patient, we advise myomectomy, hysterectomy. Adenomyosis. Now, what exactly is adenomyosis? It is an extension of endometrial tissue caused by hyperplasia of the basal layer of the endometrium. It usually presents with dysmenorrhea and menorrhagia. So now what happens is that the endometrium, here the endometrium is supposed to be shedded here, but many times it intrudes the myometrium and goes inside the wall of the uterus. And then as the endometrium in the menstrual cycle grows, these also grow, these also bleed, they follow the similar pattern. So adeno, in short, we can say that ki, these are endometriotic patches inside the myometrium. So in many uh, infertile patients, we do see this along with the endometriosis and definitely they are of nuisance for conception. For these adenomyces, we generally give painkillers, which are the NASIDs. We give them cyclical pills for the patients. And in fertile patients, if still she has severe menorrhagia, the hysterectomy is the definitive treatment. As I said, endometriosis, it's, it's an area of concern for conception because endometriosis is a condition which is a, it's a non-neoplastic non endometrial glands or stroma and are present outside the endometrial cavity. They are not inside, but they are outside the exact cause for this is definitely not known. But what these causes is, as I said, as the endometrium in the uterus grows, these also grow cyclically. These also bleed and they can cause adhesion. They can cause tubal distortion and they uh, can cause tubo ovarian masses, which will, which can cause infertility. So these, these are the patches on the peritoneum. Here we see on the laparoscopically, this is an chocolate cyst of ovary, which again is a type of endometriosis. We, what we try to do is we definitely try to treat them during laparoscopy, but most of the times it is, it is difficult. Now coming to the most important functional organ of the reproductive system is the ovary. Now these are paired intraperitoneal endocrine organs. We call them endocrine organs typically found in the lower left and right quadrants of the ab abdomen. These are 2 cm in width, 3.5 cm in length and 1 cm thick. Again, as we said with the uterus, the ovary volume of the ovary changes with the female's age and 69% of the changes in ovarian volume may solely be due to the age. At 2 years old, the vo volume of the ovary is 0.7 ml. At 20 years, it will be 7.7 ml. And during menopause, it will the volume again decreases to 2.8 ml. Now, if we see the structure of the ovary, the microanatomy of the ovary begins with the outer epithelium. This layer is made of simple cuboidal and is called as germinal epithelium. Underneath this layer is the connective tissue made of collagen and it is called as the tunica albuginea. The next zone contains the ovarian follicle. Now, these all are growing and at different stages, the ovarian follicle. And this is called the cortex of the ovary. And this is called as the 
medulla of the ovary which is the most central zone and it is made up of loose connective tissue and it contains the major blood vessels and this region is also called the hilus that is they are attached there with the meso ovarian ligament and this uh, these are the ovarian blood supplies and these all are the growing follicles at different stages what exactly is the function of the ovary as i said it is the functional unit of the reproductive system the two main functions are hormone production as the ovary begins to secrete increasing levels of hormone including estrogen and testosterone inhibin and progesterone in response to the rising level of gonadotropin releasing hormones f these have an affinity for the theca cells and they promote the follicular growth and maturation and lh they have now theca cells and granulosa cells these are the outer layers of the i'll just explain it now this is a growing follicle now these are the granulosa cells and out of this these are the outer side they are the theca cells so fsh acts on the granulosa cells and lh acts on the theca cells and lh secretes actually androgens which is a precursor to estradiol but the estradiol actually is produced in the granulosa cells it the androstenedione it enters the theca cells and there it is converted into estrogen by the fsh second function of the ovary is the ovum production the ovary houses the egg cells or oocytes which begin developing in utero at the time of birth before the baby girl is born most of these stages have been passed the ovum matures and are released when the surge of lut luteinizing hormone gets secreted by the pituitary gland which is ovulation the average antral follicle measures between 2 and 9 mm the average number of follicle is below 25 follicles antral follicles enlarge during the menstrual cycle until a dominant follicle forms while the others degenerate so this is the primary follicle this is a early secondary follicle this is a maturing follicle this is the final mature follicle here the ovum is released then these cells are converted by the luteinizing hormone into corpus luteum these are atritic follicles which are which grow along with this one dominant follicle here is section madhyavani why gynecology and ovarian reserve is important as i told you the women basically they are born with a lifetime egg supply right women are born with their lifetime egg supply that is 4 million when the female is pregnant with the baby that at 20 weeks of gestation they are 4 million at birth it decreases to 4 lakh as the girl achieves puberty there are 1 lakh 1 lakh eggs left and once the menstruation starts actually for fertilization only 500 to 700 eggs are available that is why we say that ki fertility declines at the age of 27 why because every cycle there is one egg which is coming out of the ovary along with it there are certain supporting eggs which are coming out and if the women's age is 27 the eggs are also of age 27 that is why aging also occurs in the eggs and that is why the fertility potential it starts decreasing by the age of 27 it significantly declines after the age of 37 to 38 and there are very rare pregnancies after the age of 44 because by the age of 40 by the age of menopause the egg supply is there is, there is no egg supply and we cannot produce new eggs as against with the male males the there is every moment every second there is new sperm generation but for the females there is a restricted amount of eggs which they have to utilize with or they it is utilized during their lifetime and it's around 500 to 700 eggs which are there for fertilization so that is why the age of the women is very very important while we are treating the patient for infertility so coming to the very very tough and difficult and i hope i am not making you all sleep no so, ma'am no ma'am yeah so coming to the basics of or physiology of the menstrual cycle and the ovarian cycle the most important part in this is the hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis 
as we all know there are two mechanisms which are there in the menstrual and ovarian cycle one is the positive feedback mechanism and other is the negative feedback mechanism now we uh, will go slide by side uh, slide by slide so you'll just understand you keep this in mind when you are seeing the other slide also now hormones are secreted in negative and positive feedback manner to control the menstrual cycle now in the hypothalamus hypothalamus anterior the organs which are the are important are the hypothalamus the pituitary and the ovarian follicle this you have to assume that it's an ovarian follicle it has theca cells and it has granulosa cells now what happens is in the hypothalamus the gonadotropin releasing hormone is secreted and it acts on the pituitary the pituitary in response to the gonadotropin releases fsh and lh the fsh and lh they act on the ovary as i told you earlier the lh has affinity for the theca cells and the fsh it has affinity for the granulosa cells now lh stimulates the theca cells to secrete androstenedion which is a precursor for estrogen now this andros um, androstenedion it is released in the blood as well as it enters the granulosa cells where it is converted by the fsh into estrogen so fsh stimulates the granulosa cells to convert the androstenedion to estrogen as the levels of estrogen or progesterone increase based on the phases of the menstrual cycle there is a negative feedback to the anterior pituitary to lower the levels of fsh and lh being produced and subsequently the levels of 17 estradiol and progesterone are produced an exception to this is the during ovulation in this case once a critical amount of estradiol is produced it produces positive feedback to the anterior pituitary to produce increase amounts of fsh and lh this will be clear from the second slide now the hypoth female hypothalamus pituitary axis it acts in this fashion in the follicular phase as i told you the hypothalamus it secretes gonadotropin releasing hormone it acts on the anterior pituitary fsh and lh are secreted and the on the ovary ovary releases the estradiol now in the follicular phase the estrogen acts on the pituitary as a negative feedback mechanism and it keeps the secretions of the fsh and lh maintained and also it acts on the hypothalamus to control the secretion of the gonadotropin releasing hormone now in the mid cycle all of a sudden what happens is ki this negative mechanism is converted to a positive mechanism the factor why this happens is still not known but what definitely it acts a positive impact and all of a sudden there is a rush of fsh and lh which we called as the lh surge this acts on the ovary and in the luteal phase again this estrogen and progesterone they have a negative feedback and they decrease the secretion of fsh and lh and in turn there is no ovulation connected to the next slide here so here what happens is the ovarian cycle now we say that it has a follicular phase and it has a ovulation and luteal phase now we have seen the hormonal cycle of follicular phase here we see what happens in the ovary in the follicular phase it's the pre ovulatory or the estrogenic the estrogen is a major hormone in this phase it entails maturation of the ovarian follicle and secretion of the estrogen hormone under the effect of fsh secreted by the anterior pituitary gland many primary ovarian follicles these are the primary ovarian follicles they start growing at the same time but only one reaches the maturation into a graafian follicle the other follicles undergo atresia as we have seen in the earlier slide the developing graafian follicles these follicles secrete estrogen in the follicular fluid this is the follicular fluid now this is the follicular phase so during the follicular phase to summarize what happens is ki fsh and lh they, they start secreting from the pituitary they act on the ovary from the ovary you know, on the ovary uh, lh will stimulate the theca cells the theca cells will secrete androstro andro, uh, androgen androstenedion which will enter the granulosa cells the granulosa cells will be acted by the fsh to secrete estrogen estrogen will in turn cause a negative feedback to keep the control of fsh and lh so this basically is the hormonal uh, cycle of the follicular phase i think someone is um, doing a yes, drawing yes, on the slides uh, which yes i am noticing. can we just see that what is happening
because I am not able to clear that from my end. Previously, there were the red marks, and now there are green marks. So, child is doing it. Yes, children are doing it. I think someone. I uh, uh, I shouldn't say, but uh, the login was from Sarika. I, I suppose. Can someone help, please? Uh, I will try, ma'am. Okay, so I'll continue. Yes. So coming to ovulation, what exactly happens in ovulation is occurs fourteen days before menses. So we have to remember this. Ovulation always occurs fourteen days before the menstruation. That means after ovulation, within fourteen days, the patient should have menses. Alternatively, so. as estrogen levels are high due to the follicle maturation and increased production of the hormone now estradiol provides positive feedback as i told earlier for fsh and lh this occurs when a critical level of estrogen is reached at least 200 picograms per millimeter milliliter of plasma the high levels of L fsh and lh present present during this time is called the lh surge as a result the mature follicle breaks and the oocyte is released near the Fimbria. So around fourteen day, as I told, estrogen exerts sudden positive feedback on the anterior pituitary, switch from negative to feedback, which is poorly understood, and surge in LH production release. Now LH causes increased fluid production within the follicle and mm -hmm. enzymatic degradation of the ovarian plus ovarian uh, ovarian plus follicle walls, which releases the egg. there is protrusion of the follicle against the ovary wall compression of the oocyte towards one side of the wall ultimately these forces release the oocyte into the uterine or the fallopian tube and the oocyte is actually released about 36 hours after lh surge even though it is commonly depicted as shown in the graph for clarity now that uh, we have seen the follicular cycle the, we have seen the ovulation now coming to the ovarian cycle or the luteal phase now progesterone stimulated by lh is the dominant hormone during this phase to prepare the corpus luteum which is structured from formed in the ovary at the site of the mature follicle rupture now what happens is ki once the follicle is ruptured this is converted into the corpus luteum a yellow colored area which is called as the corpus luteum now this becomes the source for progesterone now this progesterone in turn causes pati aino madhe jam booking डॉक्टर तेजल कैन आई जस्ट रिक्वेस्ट यू टू अनमोट कर मैम the progesterone will provide negative feedback to the anterior pituitary to decrease fsh and lh levels if pregnancy occurs a fertilized ovum is implanted within the endometrium and corpus luteum will persist and will secrete progesterone for about 12 weeks now this corpus luteum persist for around 12 weeks till the placenta creates the progesterone and the corpus luteum then is broken down so till the placenta is completely take uh, developed and takes over the function of progesterone secreting progesterone for the pregnancy the corpus luteum persists and if no fertilization occurs and ovum is not implanted then the corpus luteum it regresses and it's broken down into uh, the breakdown down process is called the luteolysis begins after 10 days of the ovulation the luteolysis fibroblast create the corpus albicans now these are called the cor corpus albicans which are scar like structures and the serum levels of then estrogen and progesterone decrease rapidly now there is no corpus luteum to secrete progesterone there are no granulosa cells to secrete estrogen there is no fsh no lh so all the hormones will be withdrawn and progesterone will negatively feedback to the anterior pituitary to decrease the fsh and lh and that is why then the endometrium is left unsupported and it will fall off in the form of menses sorry i am not able to shift the slide also Ah, okay. Yeah. 
So now, besides ovulation, the day fourteen surge in LH also stimulates a process called as luteinization, the maturation of the ruptured follicles granulosa cells into the corpus luteum. Oh my God! Now there are yellow lines coming up. Actually, I am trying, but it's not working. But it's becoming very difficult for me because yes, yes, yes. it's a constant Sorry. disturbance. I don't know. Sorry. So, besides the ovulation, the day fourteen surge in LH also stimulates a process called as. Uh, now there is a blue line. Someone called Doctor Sushma. Sushma, uh, it was showing Doctor Sushma while the blue line. Yeah. Madam, just she is not knowing. I am trying to remove it. Just I am trying. I am trying yeah, to. But I think it. you don't do anything now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You don't try anything. Uh, I now I have become accustomed with the yellow and red green. Now I don't want blue. So besides ovulation, the day fourteen surge in LH, it also causes, uh, stimulates the process called as luteinization, which we have seen in the previous uh, slide. The maturation of the ruptured follicles, granulosa cells, into the corpus luteum. corpus luteum secretes large amount of progesterone and a small uh, it's becoming at the cost of repetition but to understand the hypopituitary ovarian cycle it's uh, these all this uh, things are very important and that is why i'm revising those corpus luteum begins to secrete a large amount of progesterone and a small amount of estrogen combination of high progesterone and estrogen negatively feedback the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary to decrease the production of gonadotropin releasing hormone as well as the fsh and lh now decrease in fsh means no new follicular growth in the ovary in this phase and decrease in lh means less stimulation for the continued corpus luteum growth now both this together what happens is if implantation occurs hcg which is a hormone which is secreted by the chorion villus of the fetus it produces progesterone and the endometrium will be maintained and there's no implantation the corpus luteum degeneration degenerates after 14 days allowing gonadotropin releasing hormone fsh lh to restart the ovarian cycle so here the cycle will again restart now we have seen the ovarian cycle now similarly parallelly there are changes in the endometrium as well so now the follicular phase it coincides with the proliferative phase of the endometrium so here what happens is ki from the day 1 to day 14 of the menstrual cycle it uh, the, this cycle lasts from starts from the day 1 and ends at day 14 that is at ovulation and uh, taking the average uh, menstrual uh, cycle of 28 days the variability may be of the it, it depends on the length of the menstrual cycle the main hormone here is estrogen as it is in the follicular phase now we have to um, co correlate this with the follicular phase the purpose of this phase is to grow the endometrial layer of the uterus now this here the menses have occurred and here the endometrial has started growing under the effect of estrogen so what happens is the um, there is increase amount of stroma there are increase amount of these are the glands these are the blood vessels and it starts growing additionally in this phase it is also essential to create an atmosphere which is friendly and helpful to possible incoming sperm and the 17 beta estradiol achieve this by creating channels within the cervix allowing the sperm entry as we have seen that the cervical mucus it starts thinning out so there is development of certain channels so that through those the sperm can travel inside the uterus now this is the second phase which is the secretory phase which starts just after the ovulation so in the uterus there are two cycles which is the proliferative and the secretory the proliferative phase it coincides with the follicular phase and the secretory phase it coincides with the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle the next phase of the menstrual cycle is the luteal or the secretory phase the this phase also occurs always occurs from day 14 to day 28 of the cycle this is under the action of progesterone which is stimulated by the lh is which is the dominant hormone during this phase to prepare the corpus luteum in the ovarian follicle and endometrium for fertilized ovum implantation the endometrium prepares by increasing its vascular supply and stimulating more mucus secretion this is achieved by progesterone stimulating the endometrium to slow down endometrial proliferation decrease lining thickness develop more complex glands accumulate energy sources in the form of glycogen 
and provide more surface area within the spiral arteries. Contrary to the cervical mucus changes seen during the proliferative phase and ovulation, progesterone decreases and thickens the cervical mucus, making it non-elastic since the fertilization period is passed and it, the sperm entry is no longer a priority. So I hope the menstrual endometrial ovarian cycle is clear. So going to the clinical significance of uh, all this, So this is a small snapshot of everything which we have explained, the ovarian cycle, the menstrual cycle. This here, it is the, this is the proliferative phase. This is the secretory phase influenced by progesterone. Coming to the clinical significance, premature ovarian failure and polycystic ovarian syndrome. These are the more, most important unovulatory things which are haunting us. So premature ovarian failure these days I have seen patients with age 22, age 28, age 32 having premature ovarian failure. Reasons are less unknown. Maybe it's our diet, maybe it's our lifestyle, maybe it's the pollution, maybe it's the food we are eating, we really don't know. But this is a nightmare which is coming and it's, it's really difficult. Because ovarian failure is what we really cannot, and to tell a patient who is age 23 or 24 that you cannot become pregnant with your own eggs, it's really tough. So this, it's a multitude of problem other than infertility. It will bring symptoms of menopause and will reduce the benefits of estrogen. The premature weakening, definitely along with infertility, it will cause the weakening of the bones, cardioprotective factors will also be there. Premature ovarian failure it is the term used to describe women aged younger than 40 years who present with amenorrhea, hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism and infertility. Now, what exactly are the causes? As I told you, genetic, but it is very rarely genetic, autoimmune, environmental, oncologic treatment, yes. In oncology, definitely when a patient suffers from cancer and she has to receive oncological treatment, those patients are prone for a premature ovarian failure. But now these days, definitely the egg freezing has become a boon for them and we can definitely freeze their eggs and keep and they can become pregnant later on. The ovarian reserve, now how to assess this ovarian reserve and how to see that the patient has ample number of eggs and how much time she has. So there are three main factors which we test on day three of the cycle. One is the AMH, second is FSH and the anteral follicular count. Inhibin B and E22 are tested, but the triad of AMH, FSH and antral follicle is supposed to give us a fair idea. Now, anti-mullerian hormone has to be more than 2, the FSH should be less than 10 and the antral follicular count together in both the ovaries should be around 10. Antral follicular count we can do on the sonography, but it should be done on day 3 and on day 3 we need to see how many follicles are visible in the ovary. And that is supposed to be the antral follicular count. For AMH, the day of cycle doesn't matter. But for FSH, definitely it has to be day 2 or day 3. And that will give us a fair idea about the ovarian reserve. Now, and what exactly is the anti mullerian hormone is? The anti mullerian hormone is a hormone which is more important in the males because it doesn't allow the mullerian uh, system to develop. And uh, in the males, that is important. But in females, it is secreted in a smaller amount by the graphene follicles. Now, if the AMH is less, that means there are less number of, less number of follicles in the ovary. So that is why AMH is important. FSH, what happens is ki FSH increases if the ovarian failure is there. Why? Because there is no negative or positive feedback mechanism from the ovaries and the, the FSH doesn't know that and the pituitary goes on secreting the FSH and the FSH level increases. Treatment, DHEA supplementation, yes, if it is around 2, the DHEA supplementation shows results, but still I, I won't say that if it's a failure, definitely we cannot help to grow new, new um, eggs. That is what is a problem. This will definitely help where the ovarian reserve is low, but not in the cases of failure. Now coming to PCOS, what exactly is PCOS? It's a hyperandrogenic state with oligoanovulation that cannot be explained by any other disorder. 
All cases of PCOS are due to functional ovarian hyperandrogenism. What does what do we mean by functional ovarian hyper hyperandrogenism? Is that we have seen that the ovaries, the follicles secrete the theca cells secrete the androstenedione in support to LH. So this is increased. The reason less unknown. The LH secretion is high and the androgen is high, and that is why. मैम म्यूट झाला आहात तुम्ही मे बी सम नेटवर्क इशू देयर मे बी सम नेटवर्क इशू एक दीपाली मैम मैम कड़न का प्रॉब्लम आला टेक्निकल मैम जॉइन होता है बी पेशेंस मैम की तरफ से कुछ टेक्निकल इश्यू आया है मैम जॉइन होने वाली है थोड़ी देर में Ma'am, you are co to co host now. You can unmute yourself. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, I was on the same slide when you could hear. Hello, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is the same slide? Yeah. 
so clinical hyperandrogenism as i said that it can be diagnosed in the adult women if it, if the women has hirsutism if she has alopecia if she has acne it is a, a good sign that we can say that she has clinical hyperandrogenism in adolescents however with severe or resistant acne to oral and which are resistant to topical or oral antibiotics may have a 40% likelihood of developing pcs there is high suspicion for hyperandrogenism in females in their mid 20s to 30s with persistent or exacerbated acne so we have to look out for these girls who have who have resistant acne so that they may not develop pco further so now about one half of patients with functional ovarian hyperandrogenism have an abnormal degree of insulin resistant hyperinsulinism which acts on the theta cells increasing steroidogenesis and prematurely luteinizes granulosa cells and stimulates the fat accumulation we see that the pcos patients are obese but it's a cycle what happens is ki the in the in the obese patients the fat cells there is decrease conversion of estrogen into estradiol it goes to estrone which again is an androgenic factor and that is why the vicious cycle develops there is fat accumulation because of fat accumulation there is hyperandrogenism hyperandrogenism again cause fat deposition so there is this there is a vicious cycle in the pcos patients now hyperandrogenism what it does is ki it provokes the lh cells which then acts on the now these are the adipose tissues which is the fat visceral adipocity there is adipocyte as i told you it's a there is a adipocyte dis dysfunction now these secrete the sexual hormone binding globulins where a hyper again hyper uh, androgenism which causes the lh and fsh excess secretion of lh and fsh and that again acts on the ovary and secretes more of the androgen elevated serum androgens are converted in the periphery to estrogens as i told you mostly the estrone as conversion occurs primarily in the stromal cells of adipose tissue estrogen projection production will be augmented in obese pcos patients this conversion results in chronic feedback at the hypothalamus and pituitary gland in contrast to the normal fluctuations in the feedback observed in the presence of growing follicles and rapidly changes the estradiol level now how to diagnose pcod the two out of three criteria this is called as the rotterdam criteria if the patient has ovulatory problem if she has, if there are polycystic ovaries on the sonography and if there is excessive androgen secretion it is labeled as polycystic ovarian syndrome for anovulation the cycle length has to be more than 35 days it suggests chronic ovulation but cycle length between 32 to 35 36 days it needs to be assessed for ovulatory dysfunction the threshold for oligomenorrhea is 35 days of cycle in adults and 40 days in adolescents a patient with cycles shorter than 35 days can be assessed by measuring progesterone levels in the mid luteal phase to label them as pco clinical hyperandrogenism is diagnosed in adult women with hirsutism alopecia and acne and these are good substitute for biochemical hyperandrogenism ovarian morphology assessment on the sonography is accurate when done by vaginal transvaginal ultrasound so anovulation hyperandrogenism and the polycystic ovaries on the sonography these are supposed to be the triads which are which have to be present in to label the patient as polycystic ovarian syndrome now modification basically we is lifestyle modification if the patient is overweight we exercise calorie restrictive diet is the first line intervention for weight loss then hormonal contraceptives cyclical contraceptives if we give for 3 months most of the times what happens is ki the patient as a uh, has some uh, days of regular cycles but again she will have amenorrhea so in the patients of infertility what generally we do is ki we give them 3 months cyclical treatment hormonal treatment followed by stimulation and maybe treatments with iui iui or if required ivf so that there is no further delay and exacerbation metformin endo uh, is definitely used endocrine endocrine society recommends starting metformin in pcos patients infertility treatment first line therapy for infertility in pcos patients is clomiphenicetate which is a selective estrogen modulator com competitive inhibitor of estrogen receptors and has mixed agonist and antagonist activity myoinositol 
is an over counter food supplement that increases insulin sensitivity but definitely it, it has been it has certain proven effects in the pcos patient so we have to tell the patients to hope for the best and but be prepared for the worst this is what we generally do because there is a very small difference between the b and w or as you can see and sometimes against all odds against all logics we still have to hope and we definitely have given the hope to and the having a baby is definitely a joy which is unbeatable it's a special joy and thank you so we can have the question and answer session thank you so much ma'am that was quite so, an insightful lecture may i audible yes 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 thank you so much ma'am that was quite an insightful lecture before starting our question and uh, question and answer session ma'am you are working as a managing director in apoor hospital so i request you to tell us something about your hospital in short please please ma'am <laughs> okay so uh, uh the uh, we have we actually have two hospital one is functional which is in uh, moshi pcmc area it's a 150 bed tertiary care hospital which has all the tertiary care facilities and uh, i am managing the hospital since 7 years it was a take over take over hospital and uh, we are doing um, all the tertiary care level um, surgeries and uh, treatments here we have almost 36 bedded icu we have seven operation theaters we have a cath lab we do have a bypa uh, bypass surgery unit also so we are doing all the surgeries we have ortho robot so we do joint replacements as well and uh, my core area we have a ivf lab and uh, we are doing a good uh, number of ivf cases also here as that being my core core area and uh, that is what i can say about my hospital and the second hospital which is coming up is in the punawala express highway area that again would be a 220 bed tertiary care hospital thank you ma'am thank you very much now i would like to declare that the forum is open for question and answer our first question is <coughs> is ovarian drilling depends on amh amh and ovarian drilling has no relation because amh is basically amh would be high if, if the patient is requiring ovarian drilling is basically for pcod patients so okay. nowadays they say that ki if there are uh, the uh, policies uh, in in the polycystic ovaries during laparoscopy okay. if there are more okay. than 10 cysts visible cysts then okay. and then only we do the ovarian drilling and not more than five punctures are permitted as per the um, whatever society norms are so amh would be high in these patients but amh is not a um, is not a criteria for doing the drilling of ovaries okay thank you ma'am now second question is how to increase the endometrial line, lining if it does not go above 6 mm so now basically if the the uh, now we call it a thin endometrium as i told you we need to understand the reason why the endometrium is not grow is it because of the hormones or is there any other reason why the endometrium is not grow now if the patient is having a regular ovarian cycle if the patient is ovulating if her hormones are normal and still the endometrium is not growing it highly suggests that ki there is certain infection of the endometrium now in this patients what we try to do is ki we take an endometrial biopsy and we send it for bacteriology these days what we are doing is ki we are sending it for bacteriology previously we used to do only the tubercle uh, uh, tubercle yeah. test but yeah. for, for tuberculosis but these huh. days we are doing a bacterial uh, bacterial testing also and we are seeing n number of bacterial infections in the endometrium we do the culture sensitivity also and we treat the infection we try to treat the infection if there is any infection that will that may help in may, if at all it's my practice don't quote it anywhere but i in 
thin endometriums if it is not diagnosed tuberculosis also i give this i have given this patients anti tubercular drugs for 8 months and i have seen miraculous results in this now if infection is not the case if hormone is not the case then other treatments are done which i earlier also have mentioned like we are doing uh, intra um, intrauterine installation of the stem cells the plasma rich we are doing immunotherapies we are doing all these things but all these treatments still are not statistically proven if the endometrium doesn't grow beyond this 6 mm it's really a difficult situation but yes these all things we have to try them thank you ma'am nicely explained thank you next question is can conception possible in bicornuate uterus yeah definitely bicornuate many times what happens is ki we realize that ki the bicornuate uterus uh, during cesarean section the patient doesn't de deliver normally and when we open the abdomen we realize that it's a bicornuate uterus now it depends from patient to patient depends upon the volume of the uterine cavities also but definitely the patient can become pregnant with a bicornuate uterus maybe she may land up in abortion she may land up in pre um, preterm labor but um, there is no um, condition which we can say that ki the um, in bicornuate uterus uh, there is no conception thank you next question is do anti virgin or retro virgin of uterus cause any difficulty in uh, fertility not actually not actually okay thanks ma'am next question how can we help a patient with short luteal phase sorry how can we help a patient with short luteal phase uh, so the patient with luteal phase defect are we talking about the patients with luteal phase defect yeah ma'am yeah so uh, the short luteal phase we 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 treat this patients with progesterone and these days we have good micronized natural progesterones and we have the progesterone which we are using these days for um, uh, support so we can use this as well we give them injection hcg now what hcg does is ki human chorionic hcg is human chorionic gonadotropin it will stimulate the corpus luteum to secrete more progesterone and thus it will help so what we do is ki we give them weekly one hcg till 13 to 14 weeks or we give, in addition to that we give them progesterone which is micronized progesterone 400 mg vaginally is the best route because orally the absorption of progesterone is not supposed to be very good so we give them vaginally uh, one mem member is want want explain about fsh and lh ratio yeah so fsh and lh ratio basically that is important in pcod yes. in pcod what happens is we have seen that ki more androgen androgen is there so there is a feedback mechanism which triggers and there is where there is high amount of lh normally the fsh and lh ratio is supposed can you hear me because the internet connection is supposed to be unstable unstable at my end yeah ma'am you can hear me yeah yeah ma'am okay yeah so fsh lh ratio in normal condition it is always 1 as to 1 it changes with the phases of the menstrual cycle it definitely changes but the ratio is maintained at 1 as to 1 but in pcod what happens is ki the lh fsh ratio is completely changed the fsh is less and the lh is more thank you ma'am and particularly so important much. in polycystic ovaries thank you so much ma'am thank you so much for your valuable information i am sure we all learn a lot and we will try our level best to apply this knowledge in our daily practice thank you so much now i would like to request dr priyanka nakade ma'am our chair person to take the further remains of webinar in her hand priyanka ma'am priyanka ma'am priyanka ma'am ha ah, hello hello yeah okay so hello. good afternoon everyone first of yeah. all i would like to congratulate and say thanks to all the team of i and uh, 
It's a beautiful presentation from uh, Nima Women's Forum Maharashtra for arranging such a wonderful webinar series on infertility. And uh, right from your uh, topic uh, name is a webinar series and conference name that is I, it is very unique. And the topic you have selected on that are very important to clear all the concepts regarding the infertility. And uh, now talking about our today's session, uh, Dr. Chinchore Ma'am has given an excellent presentation. Every, each and every point almost she has covered. And uh, the best part is that whatever she has nicely put in the, uh, in the various aspects regarding her topic is in the relation with the clinical infertility that is uh, very important to understand what has to be done during the infertility patient comes to your OPD. Means uh, right from her perspiculum, uh, per mm -hmm. vaginal examination, yeah. local examination to the pathology that we have come across, uh, for the infertility, uh, as per as she says uh, regarding the menstrual cycles, the three necessities, the three important factor that is very important is the intact HPO axis, that is the endocrinology right from the hypothalamus GnRH till the carpus luteal secreting the progesterone. Second factor is the responsive follicular follicles in the ovaries, uh, as as Madam says. It is very important, the LH and the E2 level, why we uh, generally do at the day of the 10 in the infertility patient, because at that time during the follicular phase one and phase two, the, the estrogen is going to raise. And what should be the level of uh, LH? It should be more than 12. And there we can understand that, yes, definitely the ovulation is going to take place. Otherwise, we have to uh, induce the patients with the SCG. So in infertility at day 10, we generally see for the E2 level and for the LH level. The third factor is the functional uterus, means the endometrial phases that she has uh, very well explained in her presentations. Now, the other factors that she covered regarding the pathologies like uh, endometriosis or the PID or the PCOS or the low AMH, uh, here we can say, yes, definitely, and uh, the poly, uh, polypian tube factor uh, explained very nicely. Uh, in endometriosis, if you see, there are hardly, we see the tubal blockage, but there are definitely the tubal get the torched with, uh, 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 with the uh, adhesions. And that's why we found that there is uh, uh, reluctantly, there is not the uh, 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 means motility of the polypian tube we found over there and the infertility occurs due to the fallopian in the endometriosis, endometriotic pathology. So at that time, we should understand how we should deal with the motility of the fallopian tubes. If we do the falloposcopy in such patients, you will find that the, uh, the anatomical correlations like the, uh, the fallopian tubes having the major force, minor force inside that, the crypts that we call, and the fat uh, accumulation in the fallopian tubes, that is also uh, one of the prognosis for the motility of a fallopian tubes that, were very, uh, that matters a lot. When do you hysteroscopy or a diagnostic hystero lab for the infertility patients, uh, you will come across such kind of aspects, like means if the patient is having a vaginal septum or the cervical septum and uh, the uterine cavity, which should be uh, analyzed, then the coronal blockage or the fallopian tubal uh, structures. So these are very important factors uh, that has to be uh, looked before if we are dealing with the infertility patients. And uh, the other things uh, uh, like AMH or, uh, you know, uh, we were just talking about the AMH, low AMH level. And uh, the endometrial receptivity here in Ayurveda, if we see the endometrial receptivity, we are uh, the uh, if we use the Bruha Shatavari Grut or the Fala Grut as a basti, Uttar Basti is one of the treatment that is clinically proved. It is a very good for the endometrial receptivity, balancing with your vatajanik dosha. That is, if you are you know taking it with the Rasa and Chikesa, yes, you can improve the endometrial receptivity also. So, uh, and even the tubal factor, for the tubal factor, we have the, uh, we can do with the Kumari tail Uttarabasti or the Kasi Sadi tail Uttarabasti. For the low AMH, if we found, the best factor is your rejuvenation. What we are dealing with the stem cells, we are dealing with the PRP installations or the stem cell therapy for the ovaries. 
the rejuvenation factor that has been mentioned in the ayurveda is still still is a very effective one which has to be followed by our rasayan chikitsa now uh, i think uh, ma'am has covered these things very nicely in front of you and i really uh, want to congratulate all of all the delegates who has attended this lecture she has given you a very good presentations which will be uh, definitely going to benefit in your practice so thank you so much ma'am thank you so much for giving your time to us and it's our privilege to have you in our platform uh, on nima women's forums thank you so much thank you thank you so much yes aaj ke i webinar ke liye zoom platform par upasthit sabhi manyavar doctors और स्पेशली स्पीकर डॉक्टर दीपाली चिंसोले मैडम जिन्होंने बहुत इन्फॉर्मेटिव लेक्चर दिया और डॉक्टर प्रियंका नाकाड़े मैडम जिन्होंने अभी बहुत सारी चीजें एक्सप्लेन की डॉक्टर अमिता कुकड़े मैडम नीमा और नीमा वुमन्स फोरम सेंट्रल काउंसिल के सभी पदाधिकारी नीमा नीमा वुमन्स फोरम महाराष्ट्र स्टेट के सभी पदाधिकारी नीमा नीमा वुमन्स फोरम के सभी शाखाओं के पदाधिकारी और सदस्य उपस्थित मान्यवर डॉक्टर जिन्होंने पार्टिसिपेट किया स्टूडेंट्स और पिलर्स ऑफ नीमा वुमन्स फोरम महाराष्ट्र स्टेट अनुश्री मैम प्रज्ञा मैम मीनाक्षी मैम टेक्निकल कमिटी शिल्पा मैम इवन फाइनेंस कमिटी मीनाक्षी मैम एंड अभी जो वेबिनार को आई नाम देने वाली हमारी साधना कुलकर्णी मैम जो कि फाउंडर मेंबर है नीमा वुमन्स फोरम की आप सभी का नीमा वुमन्स फोरम की तरफ से तहे दिल से मैं आभार मानती हूँ जय हिंद जय नीमा जय आयुर्वेद thank you and thank you bali ma'am thank you priyanka ma'am thank you thank all you. yeah thank you thank you so much thank you thank you it was a very nice session ma'am thank you thank you thank you so much my pleasure हैप्पी बर्थडे मीनाक्षी मैम थैंक यू 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 सो मच मोठा बर्थडे सेलिब्रेट झाला तुमचा थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू झालं मैम आज नेशनल लेवल पर मैम अरे बाप आणि एवढे एवढे मोठे लोक आले होते तुमच्या बर्थडेला मोठे मोठे थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू 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 एकदम छान गिफ्ट दिले मॅडम आठवणी तर येईल असं तुम्हाला अगदी 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 मेमोरेबल डे मेमोरेबल डे मेमोरेबल झाला का बर्थडे मेमोरेबल झाला पण खूप छान झालं है ना बर्थडे 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 असून खूप वेळ काम केलं एक वाजेपर्यंत काम केलं मॅडम कंटिन्यू काम चालू होत कंटिन्यू काल हा अरे बर्थडे तो इथे बहुत सारे आहे गेले की नाही का मेमोरेबल बर्थडे आणि खूपच ह्यूज रिस्पॉन्स मिळाला खरंच तू थर्टी पर्यंत गेला होता तू थर्टी फाईव्ह पर्यंत नाहीतरी काही लोकांना काही कळलं नसेल काही लोकांना उशिरा लिंक्स वगैरे मिळाल्या मला म्हणजे आय होप सो की पुढच्या वेळी अजून जास्त करतील आहे ना आज आपलं सेशन चालू झालं तरी रजिस्ट्रेशन होतच होते हो मग त्यांना इंडिव्हिज्युअल लिंक्स पाठवल्या ग्रुपवर पुन्हा पुन्हा शेअर केल्या म्हणजे आता मला चेक करावं लागेल पण थ्री सेव्हन्टी पर्यंत गेलेलं आहे हो 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 ओके ओके लास्ट वेळेला जवळजवळ पन्नास ते साठ रजिस्ट्रेशन झाले हो 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 युज रिस्पॉन्स येस मॅम
चला सक्सेसफुल झाला मस्त अमिता खरंच मजा छान झालं छान हँडल झालं छान हो पहिलं होत ना म्हणजे टेन्शन असत ना थोडं छान झालं खूपच छान आहेत त्या खूप छान शिकवतात त्यांना जर मेन्स्ट्रुअल सायकलच दिलं ना तर ते इतकं सुंदर घेतात ओहेरीनं सायकल आणि मेन्स्ट्रुअल सायकल अगदी एखाद्या वेळी नंतर घेऊ शकतो आपण हा बोनस म्हणून घेऊ शकतो हा हा ग्रुप तसाच ठेवायचा या ग्रुप वर मेसेज द्यायचा करू शकतो चलो ओके पार्टी करू और चलो बाय एव्हरी वन बाय थँक्यू भेटायचं आपल्याला किती तारखेला भेटायचं आहे नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट आपला वेबिनार टाकावा लागेल ना तेच मॅडम एक मिनिट ना आम्ही तर कुकडे मॅडम चा फोन येतोय काय गो सुमिता हॅलो आणखीन थोडे पार्टिसिपेट जाऊ द्या एक मिनिट मी आम्ही तर कुकर मॅडमला त्यांना त्या त्यांना अनम्यूट करता येत नाही चेंज करावं लागेल कस करे खर चेंज करायचं हा हॅलो कुकडे मॅडम लेफ्ट झाल्यात आणि त्यांना जॉईन होता येत नाही असं त्या म्हणतायत मॅडम त्यांना लिंक वर क्लिक करायला सांगा मग ते वेटिंग रूम मध्ये ऍडमिट करता येतं त्यांना हो ते सांगितलं कारण की ते इथं वेटिंग रूम मध्ये पण कुठे दिसत नाहीये आता ते सुषमाला एक्सप्लेन करावं लागेल ते सुषमाला कारण ती खूपच रेषा रेषा काढत होते ना ती नाही म्हणली आता मला फोन येतोय तिथं मॅडम शिल्पा मॅडम ते कसं इरेज करायचं असत मॅडम इथं खाली एक इरेज पेन्सिल ट्राय करत होते मी ट्राय करत होते त्यांनी होत नव्हतं ते इरेजर ते प्रेझेंटेशन जेव्हा शेअर स्क्रीन करतो ना ते तर खाली एक काय म्हणतात पेन्सर कधी लेफ्ट साईड ला त्याच्यानंतर ते इरेजर करता येत पण मॅडम परत काय झालं तर म्हणून मी काही केलं नाही ते कारण की त्यांच्या अक्षरात थोडस बाजूला पण ते काही इरेज होत त्यांचं ना व्हाईट बोर्ड चालू होतो मॅडम त्या मॅडमनी ना म्हणजे जे सुषमा मॅडम ना बहुतेक ते व्हाईट बोर्ड शेअर केले होते ओके आता त्यांना लागेल आणि त्यांच्याकडनं सेफ होत की ते करतात म्हणून हा नाही नाही ते व्हाईट बोर्ड त्यांचं हे झालं होतं ऑन ते ऑफ करायला पाहिजे होतं त्यांनी ते झालं असतं कारण की ते लिहित होते जसं पाटी हा ते होत होत त्यांच्याकडनं पण मॅडम मी लिव्ह करू का हो हो मॅडम थँक्यू हॅलो हा हॅलो हॅलो आम डॉक्टर शरीर वानखडे आय जस्ट वॉन्ट टू हायलाइट सम पॉइंट ऍक्च्युली मॅम इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द सिलियरी मुवमेंट ऑफ ट्यूब्स ओके 
okay so that uh, is very important for the uttar basti means whenever we'll uh, give the uttar basti for the corneal blockage and fimbrial blockage it will automatically recover sometimes ciliary uh, functions i have uh, studied in my 25 patients of tubal block and uh, among uh, those 25 patients 23 conceived and i have delivered almost uh, 16 babies right now and seven are in the pipeline so uh, with uttar basti we can improve the tubal uh, ciliary movements also and that cannot be covered by laparoscopy that is my one uh, coming and the second is for endometrial receptivity you are you are talking about uh, i mean she uh, is talking about thin endometrium means yeah, whenever it is 6 mm and 5 mm endometrium so there are some patients means while i was practicing uh, practicing in europe i got the ivf pregnant positive with 5 mm endo- endometrium also if the endometrium is healthy so when if the only thin endometrium is not the cause of uh mm, aborting the planning of iui and ivf patients if the endometrium is healthy otherwise we should develop the endometrium till 7 mm or above the 7 mm and for uh, development of endometrium estradiol valerate yes we can give a very well uh estradiol valerate dose we can increase till uh, 2 mg tablet for twice a day or maybe thrice a day also and if it is necessary we can give uh, the um, sedanil uh, sedanil fel tablet that is a vigra 25 mg to increase the blood flow are you getting my point hello hello am i audible ah oh, yes you are audible okay um. so i'm uh, giving <laughs> yeah please hello hello ha ah, yes uh, but yeah. everyone has le- uh, left i think yeah that's the, the, actually i joined it a uh, late na you are from amravati hello 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 हेलो हाँ हेलो मैम हाँ दीपाली मैम से फोन होता तो चलो डिस्कनेक्ट जाले में मैडम अनम्यूट करा अनम्यूट करा हाँ शरू मैम है का शरू मैम मालूम मालूम फोन वाले डिस्कनेक्ट जाले शरू मैम ना म्यूट ओके जाते बाकी सगे गेल तो मीटिंग एंड करू का हो हो एंड करा ओके ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू बोलू अपन तरह थैंक यू थैंक यू